are y'all doing, friends? Okay, so remember that look I posted yesterday? I filmed it. I should go green screen it because some of y'all might not. It's actually still on my story. Um, that's actually going to be an ad for the Laura Geller Will of Fortune, which is a totally random collab. Even I'm like, not that I haven't watched Will of Fortune. I've definitely watched it, but this palette, I mean, y'all love that look. So that's what I'm going to be posting tonight. So you'll see the tutorial for that tonight. All right, let's do a spicy fall look. Maybe mini spice, not full spice, mild spice. Let's grab, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do a transparent base. No, we'll do a little bit more full coverage on the eyes. So we'll do clean canvas. So if you've ever wondered why I use, everything is in complete disarray in a fun makeup way. But if you've ever wondered why I use the Milk Eye Primer, which is the see-through one, which apparently, you know, sometimes things, they just grow legs and they run away. But if you've ever wondered, this is going to completely cover everything. It's just gonna be a clean canvas, that's what it's called. So you're not gonna see my skin tone through it or my undertone. Um, it's, as you can see, it's lighter and the lighter the base is, the truer the eyeshadow is going to be. So I want to kind of just blank everything out and I wanna see these shadows the way I see them here in the pan on my eye. And then that clear base that we use, the one from Milk, um, that one definitely just, it amplifies it and it does help with the longevity, but you're able to see my undertone and even through some shadows that don't have as much base, say something like, let me see if you can see my skin tone through this. Yeah, something like that, see how you can see through it and you still see my skin. Obviously we see the color, especially when the light hits it, um, but you're able to see my skin tone. So when I use a clear base like that, you're able to see my undertone kind of adjusting and changing the color of the eyeshadow. So it really makes for a really fun look, but we like to do different things. We're just always switching it up. So, Apparently I have been going absolutely wild on the travel collection and I only have a few of them clean. I was gonna use the cream to powder eye shadow brush that's in there, um, but I don't have a clean one. So I'm just gonna grab an E28, but we'll use some, we'll use, I have the other face ones clean, I should. It's been, it's been a while because I was traveling and then they were dirty and then I've been trying to get to that and y'all know how it goes with dirty brushes. They just like to stare at you from beside the sink like this. <laughs> but I will say that y'all have been getting the collection. I'm getting so many DMs and y'all are loving them and it just warms my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's grab this shade on the side. I want this to be really, really smoky. Let's press that into the socket. That's gonna be our first transition. Do you see how pigmented these are? So I had that original Mario palette and you wanna know what? I didn't really reach for it. I didn't really reach for it. I just remember it being really pretty, but the colors were kind of, um, I don't wanna say dull, but they just weren't ones that really just grabbed on the eyeshadow base and went to town. So I definitely had that. I don't I don't even know if I have it anymore. I think I would have given it to one of my friends because they wanted it. So I prefer this one. I mean, that, that right there just speaks for itself. I, I know that looks absolutely... I don't know if y'all saw the Trend Mood post where she shared this collab, but those comments, they were they were not warm. They were very much not a warm welcome. And I, I had a hard time reading them. <laughs> so now I'm, I took a little bit more of this shade and I'm just gonna continue to transition it just a little bit more. There we go. We're starting to see that softer transition instead of that harsher line. It's just about how much you pick up on your brush. I picked up, it's really important. I am so lightly, so lightly tapping in there so so lightly and then you can see how much is on the brush while well, you were able to before the iphone update <laughs> no it won't focus okay i give up but you can see that it's such a tiny amount and i'm basically just filling in this small little area just very tiny taps 
All right, let's wipe our brush on Sheila. By the way, you can do the same thing with the new collection, the essentials. You can just wipe it on there like that. Okay, so now I think I want to transition. Um, let's transition with this color. So I'll grab that on the side and then we'll start to tap that right above. And the more that we tap, the more that even that first shade we laid down is going to transition as well. I'm grabbing a little bit more of that same shade. Let's do that all the way across. Douglas, we don't need those noises. He thinks that we do, but we don't. So let's just continue to transition. And there we go, and I'll just keep doing this until I get a little bit better transition. Now I might add some more depth, but let's get our shimmer on and see where this goes. We're gonna do that burgundy shimmer. So let's grab the tiniest amount of the clean canvas again, just to make sure that this is extra tacky. There we go, I hear Ben whistling. There we go, nice and grabby. So I want the shimmer to be really concentrated, so I'm gonna grab a flatter brush. We're gonna grab the C30. And then we're just gonna load up the brush, okay? Get more shimmer than you think. See that? We're gonna do quite a bit. I like how this isn't too burgundy. It's kind of in between a bronzy burgundy. Look how pretty that is. Wait till you see it with back camera. These are so sparkly. I'm so excited to post the post tonight. It, Like I said, it's an ad, but it is a gorgeous look. I picked up more shimmer. Now let's bring it over this way. So I want the shimmer to be really concentrated, so I'm gonna grab a flatter brush. We're gonna grab the C30. And then we're just gonna load up the brush, okay? Get more shimmer than you think. See that? We're gonna do quite a bit. I like how this isn't too burgundy. It's kind of in between a bronzy burgundy. Look how pretty that is. Let's wait till you see it with back camera. These are so sparkly. I'm so excited to post the post tonight. It, Like I said, it's an ad, but it is a gorgeous look. I picked up more shimmer. Now let's bring it over this way. You know what I've noticed with a lot of, don't you look at that, uh, with a lot of shimmer shadows recently, these more recent formulas, okay? There's always, we have to think about, um, Makeup companies, there's always gonna be makeup science, new formulas, new additions, all just all kinds of newness. But a lot of times with these newer shimmers, if you take a fluffier brush and you kind of tap, it brings the sparkle that's underneath there out a little bit more. So we kind of just throw it on the way we did. We do the flat brush to really get the intensity and then all we're doing is tapping. We're not going back and forth. We're just kind of waken, awakening the shadow. I should do a series on that to kind of show you. Shadow awakening. <laughs> so let's grab our sculpting detail brush. Beep -de -beep. I want to think I want to do is I want to grab a little bit of this black. We're going to grab it on the tip of the brush. And I thought that this would be fun. Let's do kind of a really soft halo effect. Look at how nicely that fits right in there. Ooh, we're gonna build it up just a little bit more. I don't wanna get it too wild. Y'all know that I will get absolutely wild, but I don't wanna do that. I just wanna shape a little bit, so let's do it there. Isn't that pretty? So smoky. And then let's do a little bit over here. Notice how I'm pressing that in. And let's have it, I'm picking up the tiniest amount, and let's have it creep out of the socket here just a little tiny bit. That'll add our lift. So when you take a darker color, 
out of the socket just a little bit. And when I say the socket, right here's my socket, right? It's hidden. If we just create a little bit more depth there, it really makes the eyes look a lot bigger. So I'm really just taking the tip of the brush and just really placing it. And then I'll just kind of lightly tap over that with the side. And then if I want to just do a quick little illusion of lift, I picked it up right on the tip of the brush. And then we'll just pull it out this way, just a little bit. Nice. Now we're taking a gel pencil. We're not going to do a wing. We're actually going to smudge it. This is going to be pretty easy. And then I want to do my top waterline as well. And if you want to get a really custom look to your eye when you're doing this sort of shaping, it really helps to keep the eye open. I remember when I first started, I would do everything like this. And I didn't understand that obviously when we're talking, chatting, looking at someone, our eyes are open. And you're able to really shade a lot better into your eye shape if you can keep your eyes very relaxed and open. Ooh, I hear big jean purrs over there. Black eyeshadow on our sculpting detail and we're just gonna smudge. But let's really focus on smudging it up this way and into the halo. So I'm really excited because this is a style I don't normally wear. I normally wear cat eye and what that means it'll go from shortest towards the inner part and then longest on the outer part. So these are pretty even all the way across. Get on there. That's a gorgeous lash. Gorgeous. Just beautiful. How nice. I'm so excited. These are definitely thicker and more glam than what I'd normally use, but I love them. Again, I purchased these myself. I just love the idea of supporting other people in my community. Um, I'm, I'm really excited because I got all of them. I bought all of them, so there are different styles. So I'm really looking forward to trying the other styles. So I purchased Alev Sarai's new lash line. These are Libre Lashes. Um, foam ink, of course. These are the style. Am I overlooking it? Well, now, uh, nope, number five. I knew I was overlooking it. I'm really excited. Let me trim them. I have saved highlights and YouTube tutorials on this. So if you're wondering about that, I definitely have that. Right now I'm looking for lash clampers to get them out. They're in there. They're secure. Let me see what they look like on my eye before I trim them. Oh, these are fun. They definitely need trim, but ooh, especially with the halo eye. So while we're thinking about it, this is a really good way to really add to a halo eye, but it's really, really simple. So this is that black gel pencil that we already used, but notice that I'm just placing it on the outer edges. So this is such a good tip. If you're going to do any type of black eyeshadow because black just, it wants to migrate, do your eye cream after. It makes a difference. Um, I won't even do eye cream because we are going to want to wipe that black off and then we're kind of wiping the eye cream away a little bit. So it's always going to be better to do your eye cream after you do any kind of heavy shadow. So now let's take a liner that's similar to this burgundy that we have going on. These are from Stila. I love their metals. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Um, not all metal liners are created equal because these are next level. Look at how fun that is. This is matches perfectly and this shade is called Samba. I love it. So we'll continue it underneath here on the bottom lash line, but let's get our face on first. Okay, so I just recorded myself putting on my Kiko foundation, um, but then it wouldn't post. Sometimes IG just does that, but I'm going to build it up a little bit more on my cheeks. Also, did y'all happen to get this foundation? It's so good. And this is why, see this right here, this is a good learning experience. So I have the foundation on, but do you see how it's matching so nicely here, but it looks so much different there because it's not dried down yet. So important to let your foundation dry before you choose your color. But if y'all did get this last week, let me know. It's, it's my favorite full coverage foundation. I could build it up even more, but this is gonna be good for now. 
So look what I got. Tower 28 sent this concealer over and this shade looks pretty good. Now I've not tried this. I'm so excited to try this. And it's translating way more warm on camera, I promise. You'll see it with that camera in a second. And I've been struggling with my color temperature anyways ever since the update. We already talked about that conspiracy theory. <laughs> I really like this. I like how this is... The terminology I use sometimes might sound unappealing, but I'm, it's a very wet like concealer. And what that means is hydration. but that also doesn't mean that it's going to be bad for oily skin it just means that skin especially around the eye area it really enjoys moisture and that's what i'm seeing i, I i'm honestly seeing that i'm not having to kind of keep going i'm just going over it testing it but i don't have to keep going over it and tapping out um, any kind of lines or creasing because there is so much hydration with it but it's also pairing really nicely with that foundation that I already had on. So I'm excited to keep testing this. Now this, this I made sure that I had one. This is from the set. Okay, I'm really liking the concealer. It seems that it's just a hair less coverage than the Natasha Denona. It's very thin. We love that. I'm trying to see if I'm getting shadows over here. I'm not. You're not able to see the darkness underneath there, peeking through. Blending like a dream. I feel like this would be a good concealer for someone that doesn't want a whole lot of coverage but you're still gonna get obviously nice coverage. Now we know I gotta try it a little bit more, but I, th oh, and I'm using my one size powder for this, the ultra pink. Yeah, look, I don't even need to go back in. It's just kind of chilling out on my skin. That's interesting, that is awesome. Yeah. Now remember, when we wear smaller amounts of concealer, we could just set with a concealer brush, but I put on a lot of concealer, so Puff is going to be our best bet. It's gonna set it more evenly and all at once. That is what we need. Do you know who taught me that? Who taught me about a Puff? Y'all won't believe me. Laura Mercier herself. She did a demo and I was just enamored. So I immediately said, let me try a puff. But I will say the puff that comes with all of her powders is way too round and there's not enough precision. So I, was, I started using a puff. I think that was the 2017 that I met her. And then I started to look for puffs everywhere and then I couldn't find one that was precise enough. And now here we are. All right, is it just me? Or does my under eye just look completely like a filter and keep in mind this is super heavy eyeshadow which still kind of needs a little bit of work under here so it's not perfected and perfectly smoothed this under eye looks delightful delightful now for the rest of my face i'm going to use this maybelline fit me powder me and this powder right here we have become really good friends just really good friends i swear i have more of these brushes clean i give up i'm just gonna have to wait till monday so this is the Fit Me in the shade Light. Now, if I wanted to set my under eye, I'd wear the shade Fair, but since I'm setting the rest of my face, I'm gonna use the shade Light, and you can see that right there. But do you know what's even better is how affordable this is. And it's so good. It long just helps with longevity. Of course, you can see that it's blurring and mattifying, but it just looks so good and then it adds just a hair more of a tint and that means more coverage you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pick up some powder and just press it in with our brush here i don't have as much here so we can just use the brush it's gonna fit so nicely in here and then we'll just push it in here see how it's angled so it fits wonderfully right there 
And then we can use this powder to kind of blur the top part like we always do. But the powder has a tint. Do you see that? It looks like just perfectly just melted into the skin. And then I'm gonna continue to set my forehead. Just make sure we're pressing. It's really important to press, and you can see how nicely this is gonna fit around the brows as well. Pressing, you're gonna get more coverage and more out of your makeup swiping might lift it. We got Doug and Jean snoring today. They've had a really busy day of doing nothing. Let's get wild and do blush before bronzer. I'm trying to match what we got going on in here. So this is gonna be pretty close. It's not mandatory to do that, but it does kind of tie everything together very nicely. This is going to be extremely pigmented. We just, we're gonna start with a very small amount. I used these yesterday. You'll see it in the ad, but they are pigmented. So take your time and build it up or you might have a blushy chaos mess. Oh, it's so pretty. This is, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this can this can throw us off a little bit, but the blushes are actually really pretty. And this is a really good tip. Um, say you have a bronzer that might just be a little bit too golden, too, too orange for you. Um, one of the things you could do is you can actually apply a little bit of your blush first, a little heavier handed than you think. This is gonna look wild, okay, please do not be in fear. In fact, I should show you one side. And the reason under is because it can kind of, say you don't have a pink undertone or a more red undertone like I do, under is gonna hide it a little bit better. That way it's not just looking very, very pink on you. Um, on top might still show a little bit of the blush, but underneath it's gonna be disguised, but it's also gonna pull that from being too orange. And then now we're gonna do the other side without the blush. And you can see how much more orange that is. See how this one just looks like natural sun? Again, it, and that's something you can do because you already have this. You already have a blush and you might already have a bronzer that might not look its best on you. So that's a really good way to use it. So let me show you a quick little demo. We have our extreme blush. It's not gonna be that way. Anyway, it's not going to be anyway is me finding a brush so i'm going to grab something that i know is just way too golden for my skin tone okay and then we're going to put that on top blend it out and then i'm going to do the other side i mean you can even see it start to gravitate over there and if you're thinking whoa that's pretty intense literally just grab your foundation brush and do a quick little tap over to take it down boom and then let me do the other side now, like I said, since I have a more rosy undertone, I can just go on top with the blush to kind of correct it. But if you don't, under is going to work out better for you. So I'm actually going to use this shade in the palette because that's actually, you can see that that has a little bit more of a rosy tone to it. So I'm just gonna switch over and use that one with our C40 here. This is still so good. Let's use one of the highlighting shades. Let's, let's use this more banana shade. And then let me just finish up my bronzing situation. So classic. Let's go ahead and highlight the nose as well. It's actually gonna add a little bit more coverage on my nose too. Actually, let's just go ahead and go in here too. We forget that we can brighten with our powders. We as in me. <laughs> and just for funzel onesels, let's take the banana shade. We're gonna take that on our concealer brush and we're just gonna brighten up a little bit more because why not? It's Friday. I'm gonna go get Starbucks on the golf cart. That's fun. So there is a method to how I'm placing it. So I'm placing it, it's easier to disguise this much brightening closer to the sides of the nose and kind of in this little, up uh, this triangle right here. So think of that as a triangle. So once we move it out over here, it's, it's gonna widen the face, which might not be bad. Everybody's face shape is different, but it's also going to be more noticeable. Right now, it's in this little triangle of disguise that I just kind of pointed out to you. 
and it's just gonna do some really nice brightening. I cannot wait to show you all of this, the concealer, the eyeshadow, everything with that camera. It's just so good. Okay, moving on. That was fun, extra step. This is still fun, 10 out of a 10. All right, now we can finish underneath our eye. Let's grab our burgundy shade again. Bring it all the way down. Oh, that's pretty. And then let's grab our black, but I don't wanna to get too wild with the black because I wanna smudge it. I'm bringing, I'm bringing it out of the lash line just a hair. Now let's grab our smudger again and smudge that liner before it sets. We don't really wanna grab the eyeshadow. We wanna just take what we can with the liner because the liner is not gonna fall out onto our eye. So this is a really good tip. We're also having to cover less space underneath here, so it's a lot easier to just use the liner. Ooh, it's gonna make my eyes look so fun. If there's one thing we do here in our stories, it's trust the process. Let's do this on our lips together. Now let's give our sculpting detail brush, just a little wipe on Sheila here. And then let's do an inner corner highlight. I'm trying to think of where I wanna stay. I think I wanna stay in the cooler tone. So this one's gonna be a little bit cooler, more champagne. So let's do that on our inner corner. Do you see that? Remember we use black eyeshadow with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wouldn't trust another brush. <laughs> I've messed up so many looks. By grabbing a brush that had black eyeshadow on it. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's pretty. So what we're gonna do before we even line our lips, do anything, we're gonna put on this. This is actually one of my favorite lip colors of all time. It's from Sephora Collection. And this shade is called Strawberry Kissed. And this is their matte lip cream. Well, they call it something else. They call it their cream lip stain. So once these dry down, they're matte and they don't transfer. These are gonna be 30% off in the Sephora cell. So we're gonna take our brush. This is our sculpting detail brush. And you know what? I thought, of course, all of our brushes are gonna be multi-purpose, but I do wanna give you a tip. Listen, if you're gonna put this near your mouth, it cannot go near your eye again until you wash it. Obviously, once you wash it, you're gonna be fine. But right now, it's done. It's not getting near my lips again. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. Just want to put that out there so now let's go in with this one and we're going to work in sections we'll start to blend it but i did think that we needed a brush that could act as a lip brush and an eye brush so this is also one of the Sephora cream lip stains. And then this shade is, this I do need to look at. The other one I've worn a million times, this one is 96. Same thing on this side. There you go. There's some Friday night makeup for you. And then just give it a good tap over with your finger. Looks like a rose petal. I thought that this would be fun and it's a good spooky season idea, but to me, this is just a gorgeous lip and I would wear it on a Tuesday morning. But I understand that we are all in different walks with our glam. I am on a very feral walk. Now tonight's post is going to be this look. It's going to be an ad, um, but it's so fun. It's so pretty. And basically also, other than the lip, which I will put in the captions or the um, comments, I'll put that in there. It's the one that I wear all the time when you will ask me. Um, this foundation, everything I have on there is what I had on here. So I did want to rec recreate that for y'all. So it's the Kiko Milano. Um, actually, it was the Natasha Denona concealer here, the one that I normally always use. So that was different. But I use the same blush. Uh, same powders. Um, yeah, so basically what I did here, aside from the concealer and the lip, which I will, actually, I'll just put it right there. That's what the lip was. I'll just put it on there. Um, that's the look. So that's what I kind of wanted to do today, but then different eyes. But yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. So I just, I knew that a lot of y'all were going to ask, so I thought I would just recreate that today. But I think we're really liking this concealer. 
Um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Happy. It makes me very happy. I like when I find new things to try because I'm actually running out of the other one. So now I have another one. <laughs> Perfect timing. Now, if nobody has told you today, I love you so much. And I will see you in the comments tonight.